the side supports installed, it's time to cut the dovetails on the end of the cross slats. The dovetails fit into the sockets that we made on the side supports. Now we want a snug fit, and since I had six of these, I made a simple jig for use on the bandsaw to accurately cut these dovetails. Let me show you how it's done. So here's the material shaded with pencil that we have to remove. The first two cuts we'll make are on the table saw and they're a shoulder cut similar to making a tenon on the table saw and I'll do that here at the cross cut sled. So here's the bandsaw jig. It was really simple to make. I just took a piece of half inch plywood and then glued on a piece, a triangle that was 75 degrees. And this jig runs along the bandsaw fence and presents the wood to the blade at the right angle to cut those pieces out to form the dovetail. The jig runs along the bandsaw's fence and I've put a stop block in the back to control the, the depth of the cut. I place the workpiece with the end lined up to the reference line and then make the cut. I get the exact same size dovetail using this simple jig each and every time. I think there's something really neat about this dovetail technique for the cross slats. You don't need any fasteners and yet these interlocking pieces add strength and rigidity to the bed frame. But we're not done yet. These pieces alone won't provide center support. So the next step, we're going to build an adjustable leg that adds center support to these cross slats. Here's the beginning of the adjustable foot system. It's just a glue up of three boards and measures two and a quarter inches square. We need to drill three holes to accommodate the leveler. The first hole is so that the threaded rod can go all the way up inside the leg. The second hole accommodates the nut that the threaded rod goes into. And then the third hole is a large hole to allow the head of the nut to be recessed underneath the leg. With the three holes drilled, I can now install the nut for the adjustable foot. And that's just a matter of pounding it in to the 5 8 inch hole. To make the center support more effective, we're going to broaden its reach by attaching a board on either side. Now, this square board will look kind of silly on the side of the leg. It's under the bed, nobody will see it, but I think it's more appropriate to make it in the style of a traditional arts and crafts corbel. So we'll attach those on either side and have a nice looking center support under the bed. I'm going to attach the boards to the center leg in their square form using biscuits and then I'll cut them to shape on the bandsaw afterwards. I'm doing this just because it'll be easier to clamp up without the curves. So I've elevated the biscuit joiner off the table so it will center the slot on this leg because it's made up of the same size material, three three quarter inch pieces. I just need to make sure that the three boards are flush all the way across the top. So after the piece is dry, it's just a simple matter of tracing the shape from our pattern and then cutting it out on the bandsaw. To attach the leg support to the dovetailed cross slat, 
I'm going to use three biscuits. Three biscuit slots on the top of there and then three biscuit slots in the cross slat itself. There's one more element to the support system, and it's a very simple ledger board. There's one on the headboard and one on the footboard. So I've cut this ledger board to fit in between the two side supports. The ledger board just gets glued and clamped in place. When I install the ledger board, I just need to make sure that it's level with the side support. This is one of my favorite parts of using a through mortise and tenon joint. It's pinning the joint. Now it's called a pin through mortise and tenon joint because we take this dowel, we drill a hole, we insert it through the leg, into the tenon, and into the other side of the leg, essentially locking this tenon in place forever. A fast and easy way to taper the end of the dowel is to use a pencil sharpener. I do this so the dowel goes in easier and the glue has a place to escape at the bottom. And I've made a little jig that helps me drill the holes, which is just a scrap block with the hole lined in the right place. And you can see I've got two holes on this one because we have two holes going into the larger tenon on the bottom and a single hole in the smaller tenon on the top. So to position the jig, I stick the brad point drill bit through the jig and then insert that into my pilot hole. And then I'll clamp the jig in place so it doesn't move around during the drilling. And I've also put a washer and a nut on my drill as a depth stop. So we're drilling through one inch of the jig and then an inch and five eighths into the leg. So it goes through the front part of the leg, through the tenon, and into the back part of the leg without exiting out the other side. And we'll glue these dowels in place after we have all the holes drilled. And the procedure for the larger bottom tenon goes the same way, but I'll use both holes in the jig. To glue the dowels in place, I just squirt some glue in the hole and then spread it out using a small piece of plastic. You don't need a whole lot because you don't want it to come forcing out when you put the dowel in there. Just need a nice thin layer. and then just trim the dowels flush with the surface. I like to trim the dowels while the glue is still wet so when I come back and sand I'm making fine sawdust that fills in any gaps around the dowel. The end grain in these dowels will soak up the finish really nicely and darken up and you'll see those pins and then from the end you'll see the through tenon. It's a classic look of an arts and crafts joint and it really sets the piece off. Well that does it for this part of the video, but I invite you to check out the all new Eagle Lake Woodworking. See the rest of the videos in this series and videos on other woodworking topics. You can access all parts of the videos in one easy viewer Check out the photo galleries of in-process work, measured drawings, and finished projects. You can also download files associated with projects, so check it out at www.eaglelakewoodworking.com.